Good day, brothers and sisters. I'd like to welcome you to JCC Sunday Schools in Session, where Sunday School matters to God. Please like and leave us a comment. We'd love for you to subscribe to our channel as well. Our lesson is coming from Numbers, chapter 12, verses 1 through 16, and is titled, Miriam and Aaron Oppose Moses. The last few weeks, we have seen how God deals with rebellion and complaining. This week, we will see when complaining comes close to home. We will see when there is complaining within one's family against God's anointed and how God responds to it. Let's get into the lesson and unpack it and see it for ourselves. Let's begin reading at verse 1 through verse 9. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoke only by Moses? Hath he not spoken by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in a pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and with the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Question one asks, what reason does the text give initially for Miriam and Aaron's resentment of Moses? The initial resentment has to do with the ethnicity of his Moses' wife. She was Ethiopian or Cush, depending on the version of the Bible you're using. There are a couple of problems with this first verse. These two were family of Moses. They were his physical brother and sister, but spiritually they held positions in the family of God as well. Miriam was a prophetess to the women in the camp, and Aaron was the high priest. Many times we miss this lesson in that people in the family of God begin to complain about other believers. I will speak more on this in a second. But the point right now that I want to make, when we feel the need to rebuke someone, we should consider whether our feelings are sinful or justified according to God's word. We have learned complaining is not something God takes kindly towards. We must routinely ask God to search our hearts and be like David and say, Create in us a clean heart and a right mind to serve the Lord. Question 2 asks, What was the real reason behind the resentment? Let's unpack the text. Verse 1 doesn't really get to the root of the problem. Moses' wife was not the heart of Aaron and Miriam's problem. Verse 2 gets to the root of the problem. It was complaining because of envy and jealousy. They were jealous of the close relationship Moses had with God. We can also see greed in their motives. Enviness and jealousy will make our hearts desire things and will lead to complaining. They greedily and jealously wanted what Moses had with God. He was granted leadership, relationship, and authority to speak and act on God's behalf for the people. How many times have we found ourselves seeing someone seemingly with an overflowing relationship with God and we ask the question, why them, Lord? I can do this or that better than them. This complaining is an initiator of a covetous spirit. Mary and Aaron, we can see, had jealousy, envy, greed, and covetousness within their heart. Remember that, brothers and sisters, because we're going to come back in and point that out here a little bit deeper. Verse 3 teaches us about the character of God's leader. It says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. The text says he was meek. We should always have a meekness about our character. So what does meek mean? It means to be humble. The Bible routinely teaches God loves the humble, but he hates the proud. The point being, we should always be meek in considering our roles in the family of God by not asserting authority where we have none. Praying for meekness should be one on the list of all believers. Without meekness, pride will come into a child of God's heart and try to take over. Question three asks, what did God do immediately in response to Miriam and Aaron's words against Moses? And question four says, how did the Lord show his presence to Aaron and Miriam and Moses? God wasted no time calling a meeting with Miriam, Aaron, and Moses at the door of the tabernacle. And God descended in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the door. The lesson from this is that God shows us he will not tolerate any backbiting within the body of Christ. God calls them together and sets the record straight. We see the accused, which is Moses, 
his accusers, Aaron and Miriam, and God, the righteous judge. Watch this in the text. God calls the complainers forward to separate the complainers from the meek. God teaches us the attitude of the humble puts them in a class all by themselves, and the actions of complainers will be judged. The point in this verse is that God's justice is sure, so we can have peace when we are falsely accused and defamed. Question five is, how did God say he typically spoke with prophets? And question six is, how did God say he spoke with Moses? God shows us that when he talks to prophets, he speaks to them in a vision and dream. It's never personal face-to-face, but with Moses, it's different. God called Moses my servant, and God said he trusts Moses above anyone else in God's whole house. And with him, God communicates face-to-face by speaking directly without riddles. He can even see the very form of godliness or God's plan as God shares these things with him. The point is, when we are in Christ, we have that same intimacy with God as well, and we should seek a close relationship with him like Moses. God is showing that some people may be granted a certain access as one who serves God directly. Watch this. Although Aaron was high priest and Miriam was a prophetess to the women, Scripture teaches God dealt with them indirectly. He only dealt with them directly when it came time to discipline them. God shows us he put Moses in charge of the house, means the nation of people. He was set apart to do a specific work for the Lord. Allow me to pause for a second. God anointed one is always appointed by God and thus always allows them to be set apart for a specific work God calls them to do. If your leader or leaders within your church is called by God to a specific work, then they have been anointed and appointed. And we should not complain against them, but rather pray for them that God would always show favor and help them to succeed in the task that God calls them to do. Notice what the last part of the verse says. The auxiliary leaders, these here, Aaron and Miriam, were not afraid to speak against the Lord. God asked a question. Were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? God is saying because of his intimacy, that they shared, that him and Moses shared, that they should have not even dared to speak against him. Basically, he's saying, out of respect, one should not speak against him. Not for Moses' sake, but for the Lord's sake. Notice God's reaction in verse 9. He was angry with Aaron and Miriam. We must be careful how we do a thing, because it may not be in our best interest with God. Aaron and Miriam allowed their flesh to get in the way and cause them to complain, which brought about displeasure from God and our ancestors. Let's read verses 10 through 16 now. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not thy sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had put spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut off from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received again. And Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward the people removed from Hazaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Question 7 asks us, what way did God punish Miriam? Our text says God allows leprosy to come on Miriam, but when you study Hebrew, it's called Tazarat. I only bring this up to show us a point. Tazarat is a specific disease which can range from minor skin irritation to a major one. The point I want to bring out is that this is a spiritual-based infliction. It was an outward manifestation of one's hidden inward condition. God used this to punish or discipline Miriam. She had an inward problem that is now manifested on the outside. Spiritually speaking, many could suffer this same condition when we complain, when we have envy, when we're full of greed or full of pride. These are inward problems. Now, the text doesn't speak of a punishment for Aaron, but it does show us some things about Aaron. First, he is easily led into sin. This is the second time he's been led into sin, even though he is the high priest. The first time is when he built the calf, that golden calf back before. What am I trying to show here? Aaron was a mere man who acted in subjection to his flesh. When we are subjected to the flesh, we too will yield to the temptation of sin. If we do, we will fail time after time in our God-given tasks as leaders and believers. Yes, he was a, a leader, but we see he acted as a mere human, not underneath the anointing and the Holy Spirit of God. See, although God did not judge him here, the Bible says to all believers today, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. 
we must remember to try our very best to not fall victim to sin. See, the point is, we should never provoke the Lord. He will chastise his children. The Bible says he chastised those whom he loved. Question 8 asks, how did Aaron respond when he saw Miriam with leprosy? He immediately went to Moses and called him Lord and asked him not to lay the sin against them because of their foolishness that they had done. This shows us something spiritually, brothers and sisters. Although Aaron cries to Moses, but it shows us Moses as a type of Christ in his day. I'm not saying he is Christ, but what I'm saying is he's a type of Christ. What Aaron does is exactly what Christ would do as our intercessor as well. We cry to him for forgiveness, and he intercedes on our behalf through the redemptive work of the cross. The second point I want to see is that we offend people, but we sin against God. Aaron sees that currently that he cannot go before God. He needs an intercessor to do it for him. When we commit a sin, it's against God. And we also need an intercessor to plead our forgiveness for us. Aaron's position could not overthrow God's anointing and appointing of Moses. He realizes now that he needs Moses. Allow me to teach for a second. Aaron was appointed high priest, but God's calling and anointing was on Moses. Family. Never allow a position to blind our judgment or actions because God can use whomever he chooses to call and anoint for a specific task. Sometimes we get into the mindset of thinking that the position has all the authority when God can use whomever he chooses to use. Notice what Moses does. He turns to God and pleads for them. This is exactly what Christ does for us. He goes in when we come in sincerely to him. He goes in and he turns and pleads on our behalf. Question 9 asks, how did God answer Moses' prayer on behalf of Miriam? God responds to Moses' prayer and says Miriam would be restored, but her sins would not go without consequences. They could not go without punishment. Sin has consequences attached to it. The point is, even after we repent, sin still has often has consequences. I need to say that again. Sin has consequences. Yes, we can repent. We can say we're sorry, but sin still has consequences. Question 10 asks, how was God gracious to Miriam even in her judgment? Now, this is very important right here. I want you guys to please hear me on this here. God was gracious in that he limited her punishment to seven days. It could have been a lifetime ban. See, there's more spiritually here than we're seeing all the time. See, right then she was in a state of spiritual death. Remember, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Miriam was internally dead on the inside, as we stated by the skin disease which manifested itself on the outside. She had to be put outside the camp because she was ritually unpure. This is to be separated from God's people because one has separated themselves from God by becoming unpure. The final point I want to bring to this lesson is the whole nation suffered because of one's auxiliary leader's sin. They had to wait seven days to move on. The spiritual principle I want to give here is to leaders. When we sin, we can harm the movement of God on the people of God. We harm their advancement because the Bible teaches there's a season, there's a time and a place to do everything. And if we miss that season, we miss that time, we must wait till it comes again to gain favor from God that he has for us to do the work that he called us to do. There's no promise that a season would ever come again. Again, as we close this lesson, we see God graciously defends his faithful servant, Moses. He judged Aaron and Miriam's sin. Through Moses' intercession, God showed mercy on Miriam. We need that intercession as well. If we have sinned, ask Christ right now to intercede on our behalf so we can get things right with God and not hinder the church or our families or our friends from progressing on their journey with the Lord. Sin has a contagious aspect where it can also affect all those around us. Please leave us a comment and hit the like button. We'd also love if you would subscribe to our channel because we would love to have you a part of the JCC family. Well, that's all for this week. Come back next week. Same time, same channel. Be blessed now.